Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to 30 Minute Thrive, your go to podcast for anything and everything HR, powered by MRA, the Management Association. Looking to stay on top of the ever changing world of HR? MRA has got you covered. We'll be the first to tell you what's hot and what's not. I'm your host, Sophie Bowler, and we are so glad you're here. Now it's time to thrive. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to 30 Minute Thrive. Our episode today is part of our three-part Compensation Trends mini-series. As companies are attempting to find the perfect formula for recruiting and retention, compensation is the key. Emory's Compensation Trends Survey is designed to guide organizations on topics such as economic and business outlook, pay increases, pay structures, and pay transparency. Today, I'm sitting down with Brittany Ritter's house to get a behind the scenes look at the making of this year's Compensation Trends Survey. Brittany is the Surveys and Graphics Specialist at MRA. She writes, produces, and designs the final survey reports and is one of the leads on MRA's Hot Topic Surveys. Brittany helps by producing the questionnaire, writing, and designing the reports to ensure they are timely and relevant. Hello and welcome to 30 Minute Thrive, Brittany. It's great to have you on. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. For sure. I'm excited to hear the inside scoop on the latest compensation trend survey from MRA. So MRA surveys are really here to provide insights to help companies compete and stay informed on business trends. And the compensation trend survey is one of the most popular ones we do. So what makes the compensation trend survey so popular? I think what drives this survey and makes it so popular for organizations is what we ask in the survey. We are constantly making sure we have the correct trends that occur within compensation and any changes that might occur. We really want to help organizations remain competitive. And then this survey really does help them remain competitive because it has information that they need for their compensation strategies. So can you dive in a bit deeper on what this report looks like? Yeah, so we do have over 40 questions that we asked in this survey, all focused on various compensation trends questions. We also had 749 organizations participate and they reported on over 2,000 divisions or locations across the U.S. Um, we also break out the data into various sections. We have an overall, which includes all the data, no matter what state they, they reported their data for. We also break it out in Illinois, Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. And then there are also data cuts for industry and profit status. Wow. I know the survey goes through a lot of steps from start to finish. But what is the process of producing the survey? So when we start out, we kind of get together with a bunch of individuals from our organization and just kind of ask what is going on in the compensation world. We take a look and see if there's any questions that need updating or anything that needs to be added to the survey so that it's relevant. From there, we go ahead and launch the survey. We have people, you know, answer any questions that need to be answered, fill out. If there's required questions, we make sure they answer those, get them submitted. From there, once we're able to close down the survey, we do have our data analysts go ahead and look through the survey, clean it up, kind of produce the report. And from there, I take it and look at it from a holistic view and see, hey, this is really interesting. Let's talk about this. This is really interesting. We need to talk about this. So from there, kind of the report is put together and produced into what you're gonna see coming up at the event. That's awesome. So there were 45 survey questions in this survey. How do you determine the questions that should be asked? It is a lengthy process to determine what questions to ask in each survey. Since compensation trends survey, we've been doing this one for over 20 years, as we've mentioned. Um, Most of these have base questions that we've already figured out, ones that we know organizations need to know. However, when it comes to adding new questions, we do discuss with other lines of businesses that we have at MRE to kind of help and guide us. One of the main departments that we do discuss with is our HR hotline advisors. They are constantly talking to our members and helping them out with any needs they may have related to HR. 
And due to that, they're really the first to know if and what organizations are struggling with and what answers they need. And due to that, we can kind of incorporate that and fill the gaps with our surveys. So we're constantly tweaking and working on new questions with the advice that we get from them or with anything that they're hearing from our members. This year, it, an added component that we did was since the talent market has been so difficult and making it challenging for employers to obtain the employees that they need, we did work with our recruiting services team to see what they were hearing and experiencing to see if we could add any questions surrounding that. All of that to say is that we just really want to get a holistic view of what's happening to organizations by listening to them, hearing what they're struggling with and incorporating that into our surveys so that we have the best answers that we can. Interesting. And does that play a role in how Emory surveys are so robust? What makes Emory surveys so robust is that we do have a large membership of over 3,000 organizations who do value our data and look at it. Across all of our surveys offers, we have well over 2,000 organizations participating in our surveys. And most of these organizations hail from the Midwest, which gives us a strong local presence. However, we do have membership who have branches or locations in other states, which is why we take the time to collect data, not just from local areas, but also across the nation, just so that we have any data for those organizations who do have locations in various areas. This is true throughout all of our compensation, business insight, trends, and policy surveys that we offer. We just want to make sure that we're giving the best we can. And by offering our data across all the United States, it does help give us a true picture of what organizations needs are. One thing to remember about our surveys is that the more people who participate, the more robust it will be. Another way the data and compensation trends can help is to be used to age data. Oftentimes, you might find yourself having older data that you've obtained, like say, even if you it was released in March. Um, by then, the data has changed. There has been shifts, especially this last year. Data has been going up very quickly and just changing rapidly. And aging the data can definitely help that to get you kind of where you need to be until you can get the newest, freshest data. For any information on that, we do have several resources that can help. Um, the best rule of thumb is to use the merit increases, whether that's with or without zeros. It really does depend upon your compensation philosophy. And that's something you can determine and talk with your internal HR or even other business leaders that might be involved in determining that. But using the data in the compensation trends to age other data can definitely help you get to where you need to be if you are in a pinch. And I mean, Emory has been doing surveys for a long, long time now, but specifically, how long has Emory been doing the comp trend survey? So this survey is over 20 years old. Wow. We started this one way back, probably early 2000s, I would say, hard to believe. <laughs> Um, and back when it started, it was called Adjustments and Projections. So it was a very tiny survey back then. And over the years, we've just progressed it into what you see today, compensation trends. That's awesome. Cool history. Yes. Well, there are a ton of other compensation surveys out there, but what makes MRA's compensation trends surveys stand out? Yeah, so I think this one really stands out because we do ask a wide variety of compensation questions, while merit increases are important and something that many organizations want to know to help budget, plan for the future, what have you, it isn't the only compensation topic that should get focused upon. We do take the time to focus on structure increases, economic growth and business outlook, pay transparency, which has really been booming in the last couple of months, even I would say years. 
Um, how organizations recognize high performers, that is something we touch upon. And we also look at total rewards as a whole and what organizations do with their total rewards. Absolutely. And I think that's a great point to emphasize that there's so much more that goes into the survey than just merit increase. But since the survey does cover all of these areas of comp compensation, what changes to the survey have you specifically seen over the years to accommodate the changing business environment? I would say the biggest changes we have made have happened the last couple years just because of the pandemic. We always need to make sure we're asking the right questions about trends or anything that's going on in the HR world. And the pandemic really progressed everything. Right. As a result of the pandemic, were there any new questions that you had asked? So this year we added a couple surrounding around what we're calling the great resignation that was a result of the pandemic. With so many employees leaving, employers needed to fill those spots quickly. So what they ended up doing was raising the starting rate. And by doing that, they were basically boosting the pay, but not boosting the pay of the employees who were there, which was causing pay compression. So that was a main focus this year was to talk about the pay compression and what organizations are doing to mitigate that. Just one of the many problems that have, you know, occurred from COVID. Right. And I mean, the pandemic hasn't been the only large factor in compensation changes. Are there any other changes made due to talent shortage, for example? Yeah. So as I mentioned, they were raising base pay. Um, and they still needed to do that for their current employees as well. So that's why we have seen an increase in merit increases over the past year. But there were some companies that couldn't give higher base pay. They had to get creative with it. So a lot of them did start to focus on total rewards, which would mean variable pay, any benefits they could, such as health and insurance, wellness. Um, and some even included various perks, which that would be flexible work schedules, gift cards, paid parking, employee lunches, just anything to make them stand out and give them something that says, I appreciate you. Absolutely. And another key factor is inflation when looking at compensation. So is there anything specific to address with inflation? Yeah, so in our economic and business outlook, we did add some inflation questions what those focuses on was if employees are doing anything about the inflation, what they're doing to kind of help ease their employees' minds and how their employees are feeling about the inflation. You talk about employer reported data. How does that impact the data? It can help make the data stronger when organizations are using the data. Oftentimes our data is used by organizations to benchmark where they fall and if they need to be doing more to help their recruiting and retention of employees. A good rule of thumb when looking at our data or any market data for that matter is to make sure you have a good understanding of your job market. Um, one thing we have organizations do when they're looking at the data is to consider the size of the sample, but also don't lose other elements of the data. These other elements could include company size, revenue, industry, or even profit status. Using this information can help you have a strong picture of where your organization might stand and any changes you might need to do to get you to where you need to be. Knowing the data can teach you a lot, but that alone might not be enough to help. The data at first can initially be used to help formulate tangible goals, but later those goals can be used to help formulate a plan with other key employees in the organization. And that way you can determine the level of success you've achieved, where you plan to go with this data, and just ensure that your meeting your employees' needs with anything regarding compensation, any trends that are going on, or anything really that you need to look at within your organization to just make sure you're on top of it and giving it everything you can so you can be successful. Right, and could you talk a little bit more about the key focus areas of this year's survey? 
Sure. With compensation being a key driver this year to help recruit and retain employees, it was very important that we wanted to focus on merit increases. However, on that, we also wanted to focus on inflation. Since employees have been focusing on pay and demanding higher wages, it has only gotten more complicated with inflation being on the rise. And the big question is, what will next year bring? What, what is the next ripple effect that's going to come out of all of this? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, wow, this survey really covers it all. And as we wrap up the episode, are there any sneak peeks that you can offer our viewers of what's going to be revealed next week when we start taking a closer look at the results of this survey? The biggest teaser that I can offer without giving too much away on this report is that if you were to go back in time, say just five years ago, no one would believe the shift in compensation that's happening right now, or even the workplace environment that has happened especially with not how quickly it's it's taken place it's it's really been happening much faster than we've ever seen before to piggyback on this the number of months between pay increases has shortened from 12 months or more to less than 12 months this could be due to pay compression um, given that 69 percent of employers strongly agree or agree that it has affected their compensation strategy or another factor it, that could be affecting it uh, could be that over half of employees uh, for office technical service production and maintenance feel that compensation is not keeping up with inflation. It's just been all over the place and employees really want more and employers are trying to give that while still maintaining their business. It's been really rough on them and there's so much in this survey that gives that away. For sure. And this is definitely an area to stay on top of and know what's happening around you and what other businesses are doing. But the good thing is we will be continuing the conversation next week when we dive deeper into the survey results. So you don't want to miss that. Um, but Brittany, thank you so much for all of the great info on this year's compensation trend survey. I think this information benefited a lot of people. And it's a great lead into our Comp Trends event happening tomorrow. Um, but this was so fun. And thank you again. And we will see you next week. And that wraps up our content for this episode. Be sure to reference the show notes where you can sign up to connect for more podcast updates. Check out other MRA episodes on your favorite podcast platform. And as always, make sure to follow MRA's 30-Minute Thrive so you don't miss out. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next Wednesday to carry on the HR conversation.